He was elected to the Senate of the Republic of Chile for legislative periods 2002-2010 and chaired the Standing Committee of National Defense and Maritime Affairs, Fisheries and Agriculture. Currently, he serves as Ambassador of the Republic of Chile to Turkey. Please welcome His Excellency, Mr. Reyes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the presentation and thank you very much for the presence of all of you the patience you have had this morning. Uh, it has been very interesting, the presentations, but uh, anyway, you are most kind to be waiting for this, my presentation. When I received the invitation to come here, I was thinking, what am I going to say? I just heard a young presentator that says he was not an embassy, he was young, I am old, and I am also not a member of the diplomacy. I am an ambassador, but I am not a career diplomat. So we are, in some way, we are more or less the same. But I am an old one. And when I received the invitation, I said, what am I going to tell? What, what might be of importance to you that I can transmit from my own experience? That was the focus, I said. I am going to translate, transmit to you something that's from my experience of life. And in dealing with that, I have two main topics. At the end, I decided for the second one, but I am going to announce at least the first one. When I joined the Navy, I have 14 years old. And I start learning how to defend my country, fighting against my, our enemies, until whatever level it was the conflict that we were going to face. I was learning to do that. And I put the face of my enemies in the front of my bed to know exactly whom I was to confront one day, maybe. But as long as I, I ran in my career, I was assigned one time to study in Spain. I have an Argentinian friend by my side. I have a Peruvian friend by the other side. And I start meeting and knowing those peoples, their families, how they were. We became good friends. After a time, I was assigned as a naval attaché in Buenos Aires. And I met my former old good friend. And he presented me lots of officers of the Argentinian Navy. We make lots of good new friends. When the future drives me to become the commander in chief of the Navy, the head of the Chilean Navy, I decided that it was time to try to change things. And I decided with my team that the first one I was to invite to my country was going to be the commander in chief of the Argentinian Navy. And the first one I was going to visit was the commander in chief of the Peruvian Navy. Both I have in front of my bed during a long period of time. And I do that. I, I have some proposals to do. I open my mind. I open my heart. I invite them to improve our relationships with no limits. We were, we need to start working together to make a, a new different scenario than the one we have lived if before. I was extremely successful with the Argentinian commander in chief. At the end, in our dog years, we finished repair the ensign ship of the Argentinian Navy something unbelievable, 10 
years ago, 20 years ago. We share our responsibilities in working in the Antarctica. Before we were fighting, who is there? Who is first? Who is doing that? Then we said, why don't we work January, one of us, and in February, the other one, attending all the needs of the area. And it was wonderful. We changed the whole system. And we start changing the relationship between our two countries. At the point that now we have a complete different scenario. Chile and Argentina are now living in a complete different scenario than the one I was prepared to face an awful day. With Peru, I was not as successful. I went with the same program. I made the same invitation. And I was received like a, in a wonderful way. But at the end of my visit, the commander in chief of the Peruvian Navy told me in a part where we joined, he told me and says, uh, George, I am delighted with your visit. I think your idea is wonderful, but I can't go as fast as you are proposing. And that was enough. That means that uh, when we are talking about peace, we, we may have two very simple uh, solutions. The first one is we are talking about the absence of conflict. It's very easy. But the second one is, is a state of the, of the soul. It's, it's a balance, it's an equilibrium in, in, in yourself, where you are able to, to propose to, to change things. And then it's, it starts the real change. When you are happy with yourself, with your country, with your society, it's easier for you to move in this scenario and to do good things, and to propose good things. This was the, the, the topic I was pretending to speak to you in this presentation. But after that, I said, maybe I can offer you a much bigger a scenario. Being an old man, I was born in the 17th of September of uh, 1939, almost exactly with the Second World War. So for you who don't care about the mathematics, I have 72 years old. That's a lot of time. But that gave me a, a wonderful experience. And that's what I want to share with you today, this morning. When I was born, I lived in Santiago, the capital of Chile. At that time, 5,100 people. Today, we are 7 million. I can play in the street in front of my house, soccer or whatever I want. We have lots of uh, few vehicles that pass through the streets at that time. It was a small town. I'm not going to say a small country. It's, it's a country the size more or less the same as Turkey in, in square kilometers. I am going to speak of a far away country in the other side of the world of this beautiful, wonderful country. We are a small population country, 17 million people. In regards of what do you have here, we are one fourth. But we have been the same as Turkey, growing fast and is in a sustained way. How do we get that? I am going to share with you my life experience of what I have seen in my country. Being a young boy initially, going to the Navy as my main career, going to experience something about politics in the Senate of my country 
and, and running for an election, that is awful. I don't recommend any one of you to, to go to an election. But I, I win the election and I became a senator and I spent eight years in the Senate of my country. And after that, when I think it was supposed to be retired, to enjoy my family, to go to play golf and things like that, uh, I received a telephone call and they offered me to come here as an ambassador. And I accepted, uh, even uh, we have a small discussion with my wife, but I accepted because for me it was an invitation that I couldn't say no. This country, it's, it's a challenge. It's, it's a wonderful experience you may have, even at the age I have now. So I came here, and I, the ambassador of Chile in Turkey, not a career diplomat, I am trying to do my best, and I hope to give you my experience today in the best way, with my open heart, with my open mind. As I told you, when, when I came to this world, my country was a very it was a small country, a few population, mostly all of them lived in the, in the countryside. Uh, our uh, cities were quiet, and we were starting to receive the influence of the uh, leftist movements from the communist uh, area, from the Marxist ideas, we start receiving that. I am speaking about the 30s. We lived in an island. We have a big mountains by one side, and we have the biggest ocean in front, a desert in the north, and the Antarctica in the south, a virtual island. And at that time, it was much more an island that it is today because communications, airplanes, and systems uh, are making the world completely different. So we receive this influence of the Marxist thoughts uh, with some retards with later. But they start changing our society, and, 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 and the things were changing from uh, traditional uh, rightist gov governments to center-left. We start making changes in our society. Slow changes, but changes. D dealing to or going to a much more care of society, of the, the people. Until uh, those changes conduct us to uh, the experience of having a, a socialist uh, president elected. All of you know something about Salvador Allende. He was elected um, by a, quite a big number of people. One third of the electorate vote for him. And after that, he was elected by the Senate that has to decide between the two, the two first majorities. And they elect Salvador Allende. And they bring to the government with uh, strong ideas to change in a faster way uh, what we have been doing from all my life experience until then. Until then. And uh, maybe he was pretending to change things too fast. Maybe our country was not prepared to, to, to those changes. Maybe the society uh, felt that things were going to change so dramatically that they l don't like what was the proposal of, of the president. And the things start not working well when you are not representing not only the majority of the people that votes, but the, 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 the powers that are working in the country, economical powers, the church, the, and as you can imagine, deep state. Huh? Deep, state. deep state. Okay, it, it, I know this, I learned this in here, but it's the same, more or less the same. The deep state. Uh, when you are against this, things became difficult. We, we were having big inflation. 
we, we have nothing to buy. Uh, the ones who has money uh, buy everything so I can find what I needed. And, and we came to a point that it was uh, really uh, a very unhappy situation, I may say. At that time, I was in the Navy. I, I want to remember you that. I, I was a lieutenant commander. That's more or less something like major in the Army. I was second command of a frigate. And, and the situation was awful. I, I cannot imagine, it's not easy for me to translate you how, how awful it was. It was very hard, very difficult. Then it became the, the military coup, the 11th of September of 1973. And uh, it was for me something new. I have never lived in a situation like this one. But the things start coming back. Money start coming back. The deep state, as Mr. Former Minister told me, was start working and doing things that the country start uh, running again. We have a, a big problem in years 82 with our economic uh, handling of the situation, but after that, we solved this problem, and my country start growing up very fast, steady, until now. Military government has lots of critics, and, and, and by sure they, they, they deserve that. But they make lots of and big uh, changes in the country. They change the system in the country, the way the country works, not only with the constitution of uh, 1980, but with the institutions that were dealing with the handling of the country. And uh, we improve our trade, we improve, we, we put our barriers, custom barriers down, we open, we, we sell everything that can, could be sell to, to private sector so they can handle this. We put our custom barriers down so we can exchange goods and things with our neighbors and the world as, as, as in, in such a way that uh, we don't know before. But uh, my country, my government was not loved. So it was a need for the country to change the whole system and, 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 and we get this change with the coming back the democracy. They win an election. General Pinochet leave power, at least the presidency of the government. He is still see, uh, kept for eight years the commander in chief of the army. And that makes that the transition from the dictatorship to democracy, it was a slowdown. And if you allowed me today, I said that we were very lucky with that. A slow down transition. Until we arrive to a full democratic system. We have two cent uh, Christian Democrat presidents that are from the center of the political arena in my country. And then we have two uh, socialist uh, president, Ricardo Lagos and Michel Bachelet. When Ricardo Lagos was elected, you may imagine all the people, deep state, again, <laughs> he was seeing uh, with surprise and they were worried about what's going to happen. But uh, now my country is mature. And we continue building what we were doing. We have decided where to go. In the past, we changed from one government to the other, different directions. Now we are running in one specific direction that we have decided to go. And different governments are trying to implement with their own point of views to go in that direction. That's 
may be one of the causes of uh, our success. And uh, now we are in the fifth uh, president of the Republic, President Piñera, President Piñera, that's a very wealthy man, you may know. It's a very rich, rich man. He is conducting the country. He is from the center right. So we have center, center left, center right, but the country is going in one direction. We have been solving our deep problems we have from the uh, dictatorship time. The ones that were responsible for, for uh, human rights violations, they are facing the uh, justice. Some of them, they are already in prison. And other ones are, are being in the process and we don't know what's going to happen. The society came again where it was a tradition in my country. The armed forces are where they must be. They are no longer a power, a political power. They are the armed forces of the country. Our Congress, it's representing the, the, our society, half and half, center left, center right. Presidents are changing from one side to the other. Our economy is growing fast and strong. Are we happy? That's a good question. I think in general, yes. Are we satisfied with what, what we have uh, been achieving? I may say yes, but we have problems. Dealing with the same fact of uh, our success. Now we have a middle class society that knowing that we have been very successful from economical point of view, is demanding the share they they deserve from their efforts. Now we are richer. So where is my, my cut? Because we have not a very nice uh, income distribution. When I was in the Senate, and I am going to accept the five minutes less than that. When I was in the Senate, I asked, because everybody were we discussing uh, that the income was awful in the country, that was the worst in the world. So one day I asked the uh, library of the Senate to make me a study of how was the distribution of the income in my country. And they make the word, they give it to me, and I may say to you briefly, it was like an stir in tenth, they divided in tenth, and you just came going up each step every time until you came to the tenth. And this was, this, this break the rule that we were going up very steadily, so he was a strong one. And when I asked uh, why so, they said that's for a very special reason. This one, if you divide this piece, this tenth in tenth, you are going to find the last one that has all the money. And the rest is just one step, the ninth tenth of the tenth tenth is just one step the same as they were before. So we have few people with lots, lots of money. That makes at the same time investments and things like that, but, but we have a concentration of money in a very few people. Our president, one of them. And I am very happy that he has been very successful. He has made his fortune. It's not uh, an heritage from, from their family. So it's, it's very impressive. But then I, I, I know this distribution, and this is something we must uh, arrange. And at the same time, I think that we must give the people what they really hoped or they think they, they deserve. I am going to for end my presentation. Uh, some words that I read in the last, uh, in the last uh, The Economist that speaks about Chile. 
and I recommend all of you to read it because it speaks about the, these movements of the students that are uh, making, shaking the, the country. At the end of uh, this article, it says, Mr. Peña, that is a rector of one of the universities, private universities in Chile, is a center left person. He says, popular support from a student movement is not really a radical rebellion against the market economy. Rather, is the consequence of a gigantic revolution of expectations. And that's the idea I have. That's what I want to tell you now. The problems we do now face in Chile are not something against the, 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 the model or the system or the success, but it deals with the consequences of a gigantic revolution of expectations. A middle class that is waiting to share the success. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency Ambassador Hess, for I think what serves as a wonderful introduction for the panel discussion.